The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. Exhibit A, Lucky Strike. Fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. And day in, day out, consistently. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. At 50, American. Lucky Strike presents The Man Who Knows. The tobacco auctioneer. Mr. Lucian Purdom, veteran auctioneer of Springfield, Kentucky, has sold more than 240 million pounds of tobacco at auction. Recently, he said, At every auction I've attended, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine quality tobacco. That fine, ripe smoking leaf that makes a smooth, mild smoke. Smoked Lucky's myself for 22 years. Season after season, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Purdom can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Remember, LSMFT, LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real, deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Yes, next time you buy cigarettes, ask for Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, the new year was ushered in by one of the nation's gridiron classics played in the Rose Bowl before a record crowd of 93,000 people. This game always produces statistics that are mulled over by sports lovers for weeks to come. 475 yards gained by running, 314 yards by passing, resulting in seven touchdowns and seven conversions. Yes, even the star of our show has been stunned at the amazing figures compiled by this football classic. 93,000 people at $5 a piece. <laughs> Gosh, what a game. Uh, huh? It certainly was, Jack. <laughs> it seems that the Rose Bowl game gets more exciting every year. You're not kidding. I can remember when it was only 80,000 people at $3 a piece. <laughs> But I will say one thing, Don. You gotta give the California Chamber of Commerce a lot of credit. They sure think fast. What do you mean, Jack? Well, during the half, they had a man climb up a ladder and paint a stem on the USC score so it would look like an orange. Gee, <laughs> 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 hey, I can't get over. 93,000 people. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Don. Hello, Mary. I'm glad you're feeling better. Yes, Mary. It's certainly good to have you back on the show. Well, Jack, I hated to miss last Sunday's program, but I had that thing that's been going around. Virus X. Yes, yes, I know. Did you have a good doctor, Mary? Oh, Don, I must tell you about him. He's a new doctor in Beverly Hills, and he's the handsomest man you ever saw. Oh, fine. Gee, he's cute. And he's a bachelor, too. Really? All the girls in my neighborhood came over and asked me to throw germs on them. <laughs> Oh, Mary, you fall for everybody. When you first got a fever, why didn't you send for my doctor? I did, Jack, and a fine doctor you've got. What? Jack, how long has he been treating you? Oh, for quite a while. Well, I've got news for you. He's a horse doctor. <laughs> he is not a horse doctor. He isn't, eh? When he got to my house, he threw a blanket over me and walked me around the room to cool me off. <laughs> what? And when he started to braid my hair, I threw him out. Oh, well, and that explains it. One day I called him up and told him my ankles hurt, and he sent over four bandages. <laughs> well, Mary, what about the new doctor you called? What did he say? He told me I had virus X and I shouldn't run tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, Mary, stop kidding, will you? You know, you, you should be, just be happy that you're well again. I am. And, Jack, I thought it was awfully nice of Alice Faye to take my place last Sunday. It certainly was, Mary, and she was just marvelous on the show. She did a terrific job. Well, she did, eh? <laughs> yes, she did. And I was amazed how she could come in here at the last minute, pick up the script with no rehearsal, 
and give such a sensational performance. Is it true that she bleaches her hair? <laughs> Mary! Now stop being catty. There's no way to start the new year. Oh, by the way, Jack, have you made any New Year's resolutions? No, no, I haven't, Don. Well, I have. I made a resolution to cut my food in half. Well, good, good. I'm glad to hear that, Don. It isn't good manners to take a whole steak and stuff it in your mouth. <laughs> no, 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 Jack, I, I'm serious about losing weight. Really? I've given up bread, butter, and potatoes. Don, if you ever stop eating potatoes, Idaho will secede from the union. <laughs> Speaking of food, reminds me of eating, see? And speaking of eating, reminds me of my sponsor who makes it possible. And speaking, <laughs> and speaking of the sponsor, reminds me of the commercial. Now, I've got something swell this week for, uh, this week for our quartet. Uh, where are the sportsmen, Don? Well, Jack, you remember they all had very bad colds last week. Yes. Well, they're not over it yet, and right now they're home in bed. But, Don, what are we going to do? We have to have a commercial. Well, they thought of that, so they sent their wives over. They're white? Yes, yes, there they are, standing right over there. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, hello, girls. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> well, it, it's awfully nice of you ladies to come over and help us out. Uh, have they got a number prepared, Don? Oh, yes, Jack, it's quite unusual. I, I'm sure you'll like it. Okay, girls, let's hear it. There's nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina in the morning. Oh, in the morning. There they grow tobacco and they ship it by the sacco in the morning. Oh, say the morning. Around in there. Don. Holy fact, you see. Everyone smokes those luckies. A good old LSMFT. So free and easy. Yes, Don. No tobacco, yes, indeed, because they talk. Ha ha, me. I bet you loved it. Quality of product is essential, and believe me, that's what's so. Nice girls, very nice. Thanks so much for helping us out. Oh, you're welcome, and I want to thank you for sending your doctor over to take care of my husband. Oh, how does your husband feel? Well, I don't know. He just looks up at me with his big brown eyes and goes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Mary was right. Huh? Well, goodbye, girls. Goodbye. goodbye. Say, Don, Don, uh, didn't I? Uh... <laughs> Don, didn't I see two of them at your house on New Year's Eve? Yeah, Jack, we had a lot of fun, didn't we? We certainly did. And Mary, I'm certainly glad that you're well enough to attend my New Year's Eve party. Oh, so am I, Dan. I had such a good time. But I haven't had a chance to tell you what happened after Jack and I left your house. Mary. What happened, Mary? Tell me. Well... Mary, it's all over. Forget about it. I will not. Oh. Don, it was after midnight, and as you remember, we were still at your house having a wonderful time. <laughs> Gee, you know, Mary, this is the best New Year's Eve party I've ever been to. Me too. But it's way past midnight. How about taking me home? Okay, Mary, sure. Wait till I say goodbye. Goodbye, Don. It was a wonderful party. Glad you enjoyed it. So long, Jack. Goodbye, Mrs. Wilson. Goodbye, Jack. Now, let's see. Where's Phil? You're standing on him. <laughs> How do you like that? Well, it's Don's fault. He shouldn't let him drink so much. What do you mean, Don's fault? Phil was this way when he got here. He was not. <laughs> Mary, when Phil arrived, I opened the door and he fell in like a body in a murder mystery. <laughs> now, come on, let's go. Gee, Mary, isn't this a nice night out? It sure is. What a beautiful sky. You know, the stars look so close, and they seem to be different colors. Red, 
pink, blue, yellow. Jack, that's confetti on your glasses. <laughs> oh, yes. Anyway, Mary, it was certainly a wonderful New Year's Eve party. Gee, we sure had a lot Pardon of... me, folks, pardon me. Huh? Now, what do you think I ought to get my wife for Christmas? <laughs> Christmas? Christmas? Mister, Christmas was a whole week ago. This is New Year's. You mean it's already 1945? <laughs> it's 1948. Oh, my goodness. I better get home. <laughs> oh, well. Everybody celebrates in his own way. Say, Mary, did you notice at the party when the New Year came in, everybody got sentimental and they quieted down? Huh? Well, what do you mean they got sentimental? Well, they stopped singing and dancing. Well, they had to. At the stroke of 12, Patrilla came in and shut off the phonograph. <laughs> oh, is that who it was? Well, here's your house, Mary. Yeah. Mary. What is it, Jack? Well, since this is the New Year, how about giving me a little kiss? Oh, Jack, let's not go through that again. You always get so emotional. I do not. You do, too. The last time I kissed you, you ran home, threw yourself across the bed, and cried for an hour. <laughs> well, that was my own fault. I had two glasses of cooking sherry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Well, good night, Jack, and Happy New Year. Good night, Mary. Hey, wait a minute. How would you like to go to the Rose Bowl game? Say, that would be wonderful. But have you got tickets? There's plenty of time. The game doesn't start till tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> tomorrow? It's already 2 o'clock in the morning. Ah, don't worry about it. I'll get the tickets. Come on, let's go in your house. I want to use your phone. That's an old excuse, but I'll take a chance. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be silly. Let's see, who can I... Well, I'll be darned. There's the blanket. You weren't kidding about my doctor, were you? <laughs> Now, who can I get tickets from? <coughs> oh, I know. I'll call Jeff Cravath, the USC coach. The USC coach? But Jackie may be asleep. What do you mean, asleep? He hasn't slept since the Notre Dame game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know who'll let me have his extra tickets, if he has any. Who? Ronald Coleman. Oh, Jack, you wouldn't call Mr. Coleman at this hour. Why not? This is New Year's Eve. Hand me the phone. Hey, ya da dee da dum da dum da dee da da dum yippee the Ronald Coleman residence, Sherwood the butler speaking. Oh, Sherwood, this is Mr. Benny. May I speak to Mr. Coleman? Mr. Coleman is asleep, sir. Asleep already? Didn't he celebrate New Year's Eve? Oh, yes. We had a rip-roaring time here till almost nine o'clock. <laughs> nine o'clock? How could you celebrate the New Year that early? We're on London time, you know. <laughs> Well, Sherwood, do you know if Mr. Coleman has any extra tickets to the Rose Bowl? Oh, I'm sure he hasn't any. Oh. Well, in that case, Sherwood, I'm sorry I woke you up, but I do want to take this opportunity to wish you a happy new year and that 1948 will be a year that you and yours will enjoy not only health and happiness... I say, old chap, would you mind saying goodbye? There's a draft blowing up my nightshirt. <laughs> Goodbye, Sherwood. Goodbye. Well, have any luck, Jack? No, the Coleman's didn't have any extra tickets, but they have cross ventilation. <laughs> what? Don't worry, Mary. I'll get the tickets if I have. Hey, Mary, look out the window. Look who's passing. My pal, my buddy. Open the window, quick. Hey, Norman! Norman! Have you got two extra tickets to the Rose Bowl game? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jack, it's way after 2.30. I'm going to bed. Wait a minute, Mary. I just thought of something. For the Rose Bowl game, they always put about 6,000 tickets on public sale. All we have to do is go down and buy them at the box office. But, Jack, there'll be a million people there. All right, so look how early we'll be. I'll call Rochester, have him pick us up in my car, and take us out to Pasadena. <laughs> Do you think your car will make this hill, Jack? Sure. Rochester, give it a little more gas. Oh, 
okay. We made it, Mary. You can hop in now. <laughs> Why don't you get rid of this thing and buy a new one? Mary, how can you suggest such a thing? I couldn't get rid of this car. It's like an old friend. Been with me through thick and thin, through rain and shine, through joy and sorrow. Through McKinley and Truman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously, Jack, maybe you can get a new car through Fred Allen. You know, he's changing sponsors this week, and he's going on the air for Ford. Mary, I wouldn't ask Fred Allen a favor for anything. Why, if I were stranded on some foreign island, hungry, and Allen came with, to me with food, I'd rather starve than accept a favor from him. How can you say that? A month ago, you sold him Christmas cards. That's business. <laughs> hey, Rochester, turn to the right on Camden Drive. I know a shortcut to Pasadena. Okay. Gee, Mary, I hope we can get tickets. I wouldn't miss this game for anything in the world. It's gonna be... Oh, Jack, look at that poor old man. Where? Oh, yes. Look at that old man hobbling along on the sidewalk. That's a shame. Why well, feel sorry for him? He's going faster than we are. <laughs> Never mind, stop the car. <laughs> Say, mister, would you like a lift? Hey. I said, would you like a lift? Where are you going? Oh, I'm going to Pasadena, to the Rosie Bowl. Oh, you going to see the game? See it. I'm playing halfback for USC. <laughs> oh, well, you don't have to be there till 2 o'clock. <laughs> Drive on, Rochester. Say, Mary, the reason I'm so anxious to see this game, I don't know if I told you or not, but uh, I bet on USC. You did? Yeah, and did I get a sucker. He took Michigan and gave me 40 points. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a sure thing. Hey, Rochester, slow down. There's a parking lot. What does the sign say, Mary? Uh, park here for the Rose Bowl, one dollar. What? A dollar? Well, I have all the profiteering rackets. One dollar, that's outrageous. That's the most- Boss, boss, that's your own house! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Gee, 15 cars already. <laughs> it's only four o'clock in the morning. Now, Rochester, let's get to Pasadena as fast as we can. I don't want to miss getting those Rose Bowl tickets. Say, Jack, look, we left Phil at Don's house, and there he is walking toward us. Well, I'll be darned. Rochester, stop the car. Hey, Phil! Phil! Hiya, Jackson. Phil, do you know what condition you were in when I left Don's? Yeah, Jackson, I felt awful. It's the first time I ever passed out after the first glass. After the first glass? For heaven's sake, what were you drinking? Milk. <laughs> milk? Yeah, some wise guy turned out the lights and handed it to me. <laughs> but, Phil, milk is good for you when you're drinking. It neutralizes the alcohol. It makes you feel good the next morning. Go on, Daddy. Now tell me about the birds and the bees. <laughs> well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Ashamed of what? So I've been having a little fun for the last two nights. Last two nights? Everybody else has a party on New Year's Eve, but you have to start your party the night before. So what? Henry Wallace started his party the night before that. Ha, 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 Oh, Harris, that nasty old milk ain't slowed you down a bit. <laughs> Brother. Hey, Phil, I don't think you should be walking around like this. Why don't you get in the car and let us drive you home? Oh, no, I feel fine now. I'll get home all right. Hey, Jackson, when did you get this brand new car? What? You better help men, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, look, you don't have to help me. I'm going to walk home. But, Phil, when you go out, doesn't Alice worry about you? Oh, sure. That's why she sold this note to my lapel. No, let me see that. What does it say, Mary? To whom it may concern. If lost, remove ropes from coat pockets, stand them up in time to a lamp post. <laughs> oh, well, and he's all right. So long, Phil. I'll be seeing you Sunday. Okay, Happy New Year, Jackson. Happy New Year. <laughs> 
Now hurry up, Rochester. I want to be sure and get those tickets. <laughs> Gee, standing here so long, what a crowd. Yeah, here it is almost noon and we've been standing in this ticket line for five hours. Yeah, and the line doesn't seem to... Hey, you back there, stop shoving. Wonder how long it'll be before we go... I said stop shoving. <laughs> yeah, I can't understand, Mary. People go to football games, it brings out the worst in them. Look, I warned you twice. And if you shove me once more, I'll drag you out of line and I'll... I can't help it, mister. People are pushing me. <laughs> I don't care. Jack, control yourself. Well, lucky for her, she's wearing glasses. <laughs> Say, I'm getting kind of hungry. Me too. I think there's a man selling hot dogs over there. Where? Oh, yeah. Hey, mister, you with the hot dog. People in the middle with the mustard on top. Why, it's Mr. Kitzel. Hello, Mr. Benny. Happy New Year, Miss Livingston. Hello, Mr. Kitzel. Say, this is a coincidence. We first met you selling hot dogs here at the Rose Bowl two years ago. Yeah, now you're back here again. I've been selling hot dogs for nigh on to 20 years. <laughs> 20 years, eh? Well, how's the hot dog business? Well, it's pretty good, but I don't relish it. <laughs> relish? <laughs> I made a joke. <laughs> yes, you did. Very good, too. Well, give me a couple of hot dogs. Coming up. Oh, by the way, there's a slight meat shortage. Where did you get your frankfurters? From a doctor in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Must be your horse, Doc. Mary, he means a butcher. Uh, two Frankfurters, Mr. Kitzel. You want the pickle in the middle and the mustard on top, or the mustard in the middle and Johnny Logan on top? <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, stop making jokes, and here's your money. Thank you, Mr. Benny, and Happy New Year. Same to you. Same to you. Mr. <laughs> Gee, Mary, he's a cute guy. Uh -huh. Darn it, this line doesn't seem to move up at all. Boy, I sure hope we can get tickets. I'm so anxious to see the game. Psst. Hey, bud. Bud. Huh? You say you want to get some tickets? You say you want to see the game? Tell you what I'm going to do. What? I ain't got a pair of tickets smack on the 50-yard line. And you can have them for only 75 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Look, mister, you got a nerve. Charming $75 for a pair of football tickets. Why, that ain't nothing. Why, there's a crook out in Beverly Hills charging a buck to park cars. <laughs> That's beside the point. You came here. Hey, you back there, I warned you three times to stop shoving. If you don't, I'll... You what? Gee, somebody must have taken her place. <laughs> I took her place. I'm her husband. Well, congratulations. She's a lovely girl. You know? <laughs> now, where's that um, wise guy that was trying to sell me those? He's gone. Oh, yes. You know, Mary, it's a shame. Dennis wanted to see this game today, but he's got a bad cold, too, and he had to stay in bed. Gee, more people have been... Jack, Jack, move up. You're next at the ticket window. Oh, yes, yes, yes. All right, mister, how many tickets do you want? Uh, how much, uh, how much are they? Five dollars and fifty cents. Well... <laughs> Uh, here's my money, Jack. No, 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 Mary. No, no, I'll, I'll pay for these. I'll buy my own. I've still got money left from the May Company. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, one ticket, mister. Here you are. Uh, give me a ticket right next to hers, will you? Here you are. They're right together. And boy, are you two lucky. Those were the last tickets. <laughs> come on, Mary. Come on. Let's get out of here. Boy, we are lucky. I had my heart set all year on seeing this game, but I've got to see it now. Come on, Mary, we're over at Tunnel 16. Okay. You know, it's kind of chilly. I want to get a cup of coffee first. 
You want one, Mary? No, I don't want to get mixed up in that crowd. I'll go ahead and hold our seats. Okay. See you in a few minutes, Mary. Now, don't let him start the game without me. Let's see. Where can I get the coffee? Oh, there's a stand over there. Yeah, da dum da dee da dee da dee da dee. Gee, I can't wait. Boy, it was up all night. Stood in line for five hours. It was worth it to get this ticket. Ah, dee da dee da dum da dee da dee da dee. Hey, Mister. Mister. Huh? How many tickets you got to the game? One. What'd you pay for it? Five fifty. Want to sell it? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, siree. Not me. I don't... I'll give you $6 for it. Well, are you crazy? I've been looking forward to this game all year. I've been up all night calling people, begging people for these tickets. I drove all the way down here from Beverly Hills in that traffic. I waited in line five hours to get this ticket. $7? It's guys like you that always try... How much? Seven bucks. Seven dollars? Yep. <laughs> Mister, do me a favor, will you? What? There'll be a girl sitting next to you. <laughs> Tell her you picked my pocket. <laughs> okay, here's your money. Thanks. So long, mister. Gee, I hate to miss that game. But then again, with this money, I can... Wait a minute. What kind of a $5 bill did he give me? Look at the picture on it. Madman Months. <laughs> hey, mister! Mister, come back! Come back here! Hey, mister, come back here! Come back! Jack will be back in just a minute, but first... Quality of product is essential to continuing success. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. Remember what happens at the tobacco auctions? <laughs> at market after market, independent tobacco experts can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Lucky Strike presents The Man Who Knows, The Tobacco Warehouseman. Mr. Floyd Clay, well-known tobacco warehouseman of Versailles, Kentucky, operates one of the largest tobacco warehouses in the world. Not long ago, he said, Up through the years, I've seen American buy tobacco that's ripe and mild. Tobacco with real flavor and mellowness. I've smoked Lucky's myself for 17 years. So for your own real, deep-down smoking enjoyment, remember... L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Yes, next time you buy cigarettes, ask for Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. <laughs> Well, anyway, Don, now you know why I'll never go to another football game with Jack. Well, I don't blame you, Mary. That smart guy sold me the ticket. I'd like to see him again. I'll tell him plenty. Well, drop in to Sarah's tonight, and you can. How do you know he's going to be there? I've got a date with him. You would. <laughs> Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Thank you.